When I mention pigeons, this is probably the type you envision. To pigeon haters, they're nothing but constantly pooping rats with wings. An unfair stereotype? Or right on the money? Doesn't matter, this episode has nothing to do with those pigeons. Today, we're talking about this colorful, iridescent, downright gorgeous tropical bird. One of the most handsome creatures on Earth. This is the Nicobar Pigeon. Hi, I'm Irania Iyer, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. This video was made possible thanks to the support of our sponsor, Wondrium. You may have heard us talk about The Great Courses Plus before, and now that team has shifted to a new name, Wondrium. But it's not just a new name. They're creating bigger, better, and more exciting content. Wondrium offers the same mission as before educational content that's approachable, entertaining, and illuminating. It's a museum for your mind. We've been big fans of the team over at Wondrium because we use the service. Many people ask me how to get started in birding and ornithology, and I love to recommend the amazing doc, The Scientific Wonder of Birds. It teaches you all you need to know about the most amazing creatures on Earth. If you've ever wondered about anything, Wondrium will be your new favorite place. And they're giving viewers of Animal Logic a free trial. You can support the show by clicking the link in the description or by going to wondrium.com slash animal logic. Thanks, Wondrium! The Nicobar Pigeon is the largest extant pigeon in the world. This big beauty is the only living species in the genus Caloanus. They're the closest living relative to the now extinct dodo bird, who belong to the same family. So the famous dodo was basically a flightless ground pigeon. I can see it now. This bird is named for one of the places they live in, the Nicobar Islands, which is an island chain in the Indian Ocean. They can also be found in the Malay Archipelago, Palau, and a few other spots in Southeast Asia. Some have even been spotted in Western Australia. The biggest colony of Nicobar pigeons is in Batimal, a remote wildlife sanctuary in the Nicobar Islands. Thousands of pigeons live there. The island is two square kilometers of uninhabited land and was badly hit by the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Flee to the sky, Nicobar pigeons. Save yourselves. The Nicobar pigeon is bigger than your average city pigeon. It's about 40 centimeters long, weighs about half a kilogram, and has a wingspan of over 50 centimeters. The most eye-catching part of the Nicobar pigeon's appearance are those long iridescent feathers. Look at those colors. Kind of puts the rock pigeon's only slightly iridescent neck to shame. Sorry, city slickers. The Nicobar pigeon has a gray head, big eyes, and a distinct white tail. Its long neck features green and copper hackles, which sort of look like a bird mane. Some pigeons are known to keep their hackles erect, especially the males, when they're courting a female or feeling a little aggressive. Nicobar pigeons have sears on their beak, which is like a little knob right on top. Males have a slightly bigger series than female Nicobar pigeons. Unless it's breeding season, Nicobar pigeons lead a pretty nomadic life. These strong, fast flyers commute between islands in flocks that can have anywhere from 20 to 80 members. Nicobar pigeons can reach amazing speeds of up to 150 kilometers an hour and fly in columns or in single file lines. This is where the bird's short, bright white tail comes in handy, especially when the sun starts to go down. When these birds fly from island to island to island, they fly in such a way so that they can see the front bird's tail feathers. It's kind of like a tail light when you're driving a car. The white tail isn't just for keeping flocks together in the sky. Since only fully adult pigeons have the white tail, it's a sign to let other birds know that they shouldn't be courted. If they're old enough to have white tail feathers, they're probably old enough to have monogamous life partners. Hey. Check the white butt. I'm already taken. When not flying, the bird usually sleeps on offshore islets with zero predators. 
Nicobar pigeons don't mind humans, probably because humans mean food availability. But they refuse to roost or breed anywhere there are people. Even though the bird spends lots of times flying between islands, they only search for food on land. It's a forager combing the forest floor for seeds, grains, buds, berries, nuts, fallen fruit, and invertebrates. Hunting and eating happens from dusk till dawn. The dark of the night plus the extra shade from trees helps the Nicobar pigeon hide from predators like rats, cats, owls, and reptiles. Nicobar pigeons aren't particularly vocal. They generally do that classic pigeon, ooh. But when facing predators, they make a sort of grunting sound that some have compared to a pig snorting. Now it's time to talk gizzards. Gizzards are the part of the stomach that's used for grinding food. A Nicobar pigeon's gizzard is diamond levels of hard. It's so strong that the bird is able to eat rock hard nuts that humans can only get into with a hammer. The dark side of the Nicobar pigeon's hard gizzard stone is that they're hunted for it. People actually turn the stones into jewelry, like rings. Not only are gizzard rings ugly and stinky, they're also unethical. Nicobar pigeons usually breed from January to March, and they travel to uninhabited islands or islets to nest in colonies. Some colonies can boast thousands of birds. When it's time to find a mate, the male does the classic look at me courtship ritual. He struts in circles, puffs out his feathers, and loudly coos for the female. It may take a few days for the female to decide he's the guy for her. But once she does, they're together for life. Now it's the male's job to find a location for the couple's nest. The best place is up a tree, somewhere between 2 and 12 meters off the ground. The higher the nest, the safer their family. Then it's up to the female to build the actual nest. She'll haphazardly throw some loose twigs and roots together and structure it so it's stable enough for her family. Some have described the Nicobar pigeon's nest as untidy, but give the lady a break, she's pregnant. After about a month of incubation, the baby Nicobar pigeon is born. The squabs are defenseless and almost completely naked. They'll start getting their feathers after about 10 days. Until the babies can digest seeds and fruits, their parents feed them crop milk, which they regurgitate into the baby's mouths. Hatchlings are ready to fledge in less than a month. In addition to being hunted for their gizzard stones and meat, Nicobar pigeons are being trapped for the illegal pet trade. I get that these birds are beautiful, but they don't belong in cages. Humans are also guilty of destroying the birds' available nesting habitat. The offshore islets these birds love are being logged for plantations, destroyed by construction, or polluted by nearby industries and harbors. Its conservation status is listed as near threatened, and with all this human interference, their future is unclear. Hopefully, the Nicobar pigeon doesn't go the way of the dodo. It's way too beautiful for extinction. And at least this time around, if we act quickly, we can actually do something about it. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights. I'll see you later.